Hello and welcome to the Course Management and Maintenance Strategies video tutorial. Uh, my name is Eric Ford and here's my contact information. I teach at the University of Oregon. I teach Business Analytics, Excel and Access to a large enrollment course in a hybrid learning environment. Some of the other videos that are posted here are facilitating a course designed by a coordinator, section instructor, and end of term evaluate success and transition to next term. There is some overlap between these videos and this one, so if you already watched those, uh, you'll have to kind of hunt and pick in here for the information that you need, or this one will cover those and I will reference those and uh, to say where more detail can be found in those other videos. So again, here's my contact information. This is the video that we're doing today, Course Management and Maintenance Strategies and we'll get started. I'll put my contact information up again at the end of this video so that you're uh, able to get that. So let's hop on in to this and see. So here is my uh, course list and here's the summer course that we'll use. Uh, these other ones are my normal enrollment. They're, they're larger enrollment courses with 400 plus students in it, but this, uh, this one here in summer is uh, only about 30 students and should resemble uh, the average course more, more closely. Well, right as we hop in here, uh, we can first thing we can look at is just manage course here to deal with some things there. And the one I wanted to point out here is course roster. So I'll hop into the course roster, and we'll see uh, that we've got uh, the the uh, student names and student emails here. Uh, you'll note the yellow boxes that are obscuring that. Uh, I've added those in uh, after in in editing uh, post video so that I could. Um, uh, uh, not be showing uh, student names and student identifiers that are uh, uh, that are personal, and uh, that way we wouldn't run afoul of the uh, FERPA Records Protection Act uh, in doing this. So the things we can do here is we can change a we can change a student rec or a, a student role and status by just clicking on that, and then we have these options here. We can go active or inactive. So if you've got a student that's enrolled but hasn't but but uh, but is inactive now, you choose inactive to get them out of your gradebook. And then here what we can do is we have student or teaching assistant. So if you if you have a teaching assistant, GTF like I do, um, you'll want to elevate them to teacher, teaching assistant here by clicking on that one. So you have them enroll in the course, and then you change their status over here to, um, to uh, teaching assistant. All right. So that's what we can do with the roster here. And then let's hop back into the course, and we'll get started. So the uh, first thing to look at here is this opening notifications window. This opens by default to student view, which is not any help to us as an instructor. So we need to come over here and click our little blue person here and turn them green. Whenever this is green, we're in instructor view. Whenever it's blue, we're in student view. So we're green now. And this shows us kind of, this is a nice quick update on what's going on in your course. So for instance, past due. Let's go ahead and click on that, and that's going to show the students and the um, and the assignments that are past due for those in student for those students. Uh, another good one would be here if we just go to uh, student performance and we bring that up. We can get our list of students here, and then um, the average grade that they're getting on assignments and time on task. I would probably set this to some so that I could see um, uh, you know the time on the time in the in the course that students are spending and then of course this uh, this will closely resemble something we'll take a deep dive into in the uh, in the end of term uh, video which shows um, the usage of the the student usage reports would be a, would be a, a deeper dive into this kind of thing okay. so there's a couple of things we can do here in the uh, well there's several things we can do in the, in the notifications window one of them is to customize this and by doing that if we bring this up you can see we can choose to display a, uh, a different welcome message by coming up here and saying, hey, I'd like to edit that message. And instead of, and so that way when this opens up, you can have a particular message there to your students as it defaults to this thing, right? Uh, another thing that we can do is to go ahead and customize uh, just what it's going to make alerts for down in here. And so um, you may want to go ahead and customize this to change the way that this is going to output. Okay. So uh, that's it for the, uh, for the notifications window. Let's jump down into, um, into our gradebook. I and mean, that's, where, that's where I spend most of my time as I deal with stuff. But before we do that, let's hop into, uh, into the library here, or rather just my, my course. Right? Because I just wanna, what I want to 
what I want to illustrate here is when we get when we look at the grade book in a moment, we'll see that it's going to uh, directly reflect uh, how the course is structured, and and by that I mean so every time that I have created a folder, uh, that will become a folder of assignments in my grade book, and so I like a deep file structure on my course. Um, I find it. Uh, helpful to keep my students organized. You'll see that uh, that at the um, at the highest level, I just have a folder for each week, and then inside of each of those weeks, I then have even uh, class one and two for Monday and Wednesday, and then assignments in there. Uh, for instance, here I have my the, the quizzes inside of folders, and so what this. Uh, the deep file structure is really helpful for me keeping my course organized, but it does have the consequence of making my gradebook somewhat uh, laborious to deal with. And so let's hop over that there and we will take a look at that. And so I'm going to come down to grades. You can see when I click on grades, again, it defaults to the student view. So I like to come into an instructor gradebook where it defaults to uh, the instructor view. So we can hop right into things here and look and say, okay, so here's, you can see again, so here is my file structure of my course replicated here in my gradebook. And so the, the, the problem, of course, is that at this, at this level, I'm really not seeing anything except for this aggregate grade here. And so I even have that, uh, I have that hidden from students. I don't want them to see that. And so I really, I have to go ahead and drill down into this file structure to get to my assignments to see these grades. That's the consequence for having a deep file structure. Um, it is, it's likely that a lot of the other courses that I've seen uh, done by other instructors, it's a very flat, uh, a very flat grade book with no, with no file structure. And so um, all of the assignments will be listed out in one big long list here. You just have grade columns, uh, much more uh, like, a, like, a, um, like a more common grade book that you're used to seeing. Because of my file structure, I have to deal with this and drill down into my assignments. And so here we are in week two. And what I'm really interested in right now is looking at this, uh, this greater project assignment that I've assigned from chapter two to my students there from this week. And so one thing to look at here is to say, okay, so this is what I'm really interested in. Um, if I had a much more flat uh, grade book, as I, as I described, if I didn't have this file structure, what I would be looking at here as a student, and I'd be looking at, you know, maybe uh, 40 columns here, right, of, um, of different assignments, in which case these filters would really come in handy. Because at that point, I might well want to just go ahead and look and just say, oh, I'm really interested in just this uh, a particular student. I want to look at all their assignments. And so I would just go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to search this by a particular student. Or I might want to select a group and look at just that. And we'll look at, at making groups of students a little later in this video. So other things that I want to do is I want to look at just assignment types. Um, I work a lot with greater projects in my course, and that's where the lion's share of the points come from. So I might well want to go ahead and just select those and say, just show me uh, greater projects, in which case it would filter this down to, to just, uh, just the greater project. Uh, I think this one's just a greater project homework assignment. See, so it filters down to that. I'm going to remove those filters. And then I could go to due dates, right? Uh, assignment status, uh, titles. So there's, uh, there's a, a number of filters here that could be used effectively to go ahead and reduce the clutter in your gradebook and drill down onto an assignment. Okay. So the, uh, the thing I use most often is if I want to come over here into, and I'm really interested in this greater assignment, the thing to do is to hop on in here and say, hey, let's view all submissions, right? This is, this is where I spend most of my time in my course. It's, um, it's just the best view and uh, the, the best data the feedback that I can get on, on what's going on in my course. So for this, uh, for this assignment, this Chapter 2, Grader 1 homework, here are all of my students listed out through here. And then I've got these expand and collapse buttons over here. And so uh, I, allow, um, I allow two submissions on any assignment and so for instance I'm just going to dive into this student here I'll go ahead and expand this out and I can see submission one submission two there and so I can see they got a 60 on this first one and then 100 on the, on the next one I kind of expect to see that and I want to know what's going on for some reason I'm getting in here and I want to know so I'll just go ahead and click on this first submission and it goes to this feedback window here and this is just fantastic if uh, if I was set up for uh, so 
the way I have my course set up, uh, late submissions are automatically allowed. But often, but if I didn't, if I had to actually, uh, if I had to uh, uh, allow, um, or if I had to manually allow late submissions, I'd have a, I'd have a, uh, an alert up here to do so. Uh, integrity violations will also appear here, and we'll look at those uh, here in a minute after we get we get done looking at this one. Right, so uh, there are uh, a couple of things that we want to look at here. Uh, this from this view. Um, we can uh, we can get feedback on all of these um, on this this submission. We can see when it was submitted, the maximum the maximum score, how many points they got, the time that it was submitted at, and the number of, of submission attempts. We get this uh, very high level view of how they scored on the rubric here, and then we have four different views, different ways of viewing. Uh, this assignment. We can just click submitted file and get a zip file to open it up and look at exactly what they submitted. This summary report here, right, the summary report gives us uh, this same kind of feedback on the um, on the instruction and the points that they got for that instruction. These also have expand collapse buttons. We need to use those because at this point all it is showing us is just the instruction. We really want to go ahead and expand this out and see, okay, so this is exactly where they lost the points there, right? So this, this if statement was not written correctly. And so I'll go ahead and close this. The next view is the marked up report. And here we can see, uh, we can see the actual file, kind of just flat, and we can see the, where the points were deducted. And so my favorite by far, and what I tell my students to use, is download submissions with live comments. When I click on this, it downloads that file, which I have open right here, and it opens to this front page, which has actually been inserted. Right? So this was the file, the, the uh, workbook that the student submitted, and the, the, the single worksheet, and this has been submitted by the, uh, by the grader, uh, the MyIT Lab grader. And it says, hey, 40 points were deducted, and it's commented in place. So if I come over and I look at this, this is the actual file the student has submitted with these comments inserted by the MyIT Lab grading engine. Oh, I can come right here, or the student can too. This is the way that I point all of my students to do this. They, they have, um, they can turn in the uh, the two attempts, and um, and they'll it'll keep the highest grade. So that's why this student was able to get a hundred on this, right? Because they came back through here and they looked at this and they said, okay, so here is what the with the comment that is what this should have looked like, and what does it look like? Let me click on this cell. Ah, okay, so this student had this exactly right, except. They forgot to use the optional argument of false at the end, which actually, of course, um, is is incorrect. And so they would need to make that correction and turn that in. Uh, okay, this if statement that we looked at before. Right? So this if statement. Ah, oh, hey, look at this. This is wrong, right? They hard coded the seventy-five in there. That'll never do. So if we look at the comment, we'll see. We'll see if we look at the comment. Ah, oh, okay. So they should have used a cell reference there instead of hard coding that seventy-five in there. So they need to fix that. And if we come over here, uh, let's see here. So this is the payment function. Everything looks good there. What do they turn in? Ah, okay. So they did not multiply F5. F5 being years times months down here. So they have their they have the number of terms incorrect. So they need to fix that too. So the beauty of download with um, with live comments. I mean, I like it because I get this kind of granular feedback, and I like it for students because they get this granular feedback. They can actually make corrections right here at the cell level and just make the corrections right here and resubmit this same file to the graded project and it'll run through and then improve their score. So this is my favorite way of doing this. Uh, this uh, this doesn't work as well in some of the other my, uh, other other applications, uh, PowerPoint, Word, uh, because you know the comments can't be just can't be at the cell level like this, and so it's not always as good, but in, uh, in teaching Excel, uh, there's no better feedback that I could ask for than this, so that's just, that's just gorgeous. Right. So we'll hop out of this one and come back over and take a look at this to say there's a couple of other important things that happen here. Um, one thing that I get a lot is students emailing me and saying, hey, uh, you know, they'll have a zero, a zero out of 100 here on an assignment because it just uh, the something crashed, something like that, and they'll, they'll ask me, hey, can you, re can you remove that? And so I can. What I'll do is I'll come up and I'll go to this delete right here. I'll go to whichever submission I want to get rid of, you know, one, or in this case, right, I want to go to the one, the 60 was some inc uh, incorrect submission. I'll just come here to delete, and I can say delete this single submission or all submissions from this student for this project. So I'll use those quite a bit. 
Uh, the other thing to do is to come in here and edit this grade and say, ah, you know what, I looked at that and you really should have gotten your points there. And so I'll say, well, you should have gotten 75 out of 100. And then when I click update, uh, it'll show this as being edited and it'll change that grade. All right, so let's head back over into the grade book. And when we come here again, uh, in this grade book, I'll look at this and say, uh, another thing that I may want to do is look at integrity violations. So uh, I think if we go to week four, we'll find one of those into week four. Right, we can see how, okay, so we have some other symbols. We have the, um, we have the uh, below passing threshold. I have the threshold set for 70, so 60.4 is bringing that one up. And then we have this integrity violation right there, this, uh, this little copy symbol right there. There's an integrity violation going on. So uh, from here, I can go to view all submissions again, or I can come right here and just say view grade submission from this drop-down arrow. And this will take us to that same page, and we're... And so here I'm looking at the potential integrity violation. And so, of course, I want to look at this and, and determine what went on. Uh, so the student only got 1.5 points. So something, something definitely went uh, horribly wrong here. So I'll click on Show Details. And what this does is it says, okay, so here's the report for an integrity violation. It says, this was what I expected to find. Here's the student's name that I expected to find there. And instead I found this one. And I, and I left this uh, I left this unblanked because this guy won't mind being identified here. This is my boss. <laughs> okay, so, so this is my boss. So why is my boss's name here on the file that, um, that was submitted by the student? Okay, so this, is, this must be some kind of instructional file that I, that, um, that I uh, handed out to the students. And this student has accidentally submitted this, um, this instructional resource that I put out there. And so this is obviously a mistake, and that's why they only got 1.5 points. And so, okay, so uh, no problem. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, more often, what I'll find here is I'll see the student name here, and then I'll see another student name, name here. And uh, I generally won't do a whole lot about one assignment, but there's but looking at the, uh, at the activity reports, which we'll look at toward the end of this video, um, I can I can detect patterns, and if there's a, if there's a pattern of what looks to be cheating, uh, I'll then I'll identify it, then, or I'll I'll deal with it then. Right. So that's our um, integrity violation. The other thing we want to look at here is um, is exporting these grades as a CSV, and to do that, I'll just come over here and I'll click download, and this will export a CSV of this entire um, of all of these students and all of these grades, and then with just a little. Uh, manipulation in there, um, I can turn those into into something very very useful for me if I'm keeping a master grade book or something like that. Right? So that's just exports to a CSV. So, uh, another thing we can deal with here is we can make uh, we can make student groups, right? And student groups can actually be be really helpful in that uh, we want to uh, we want to create uh, groups that we deal with differently. And so the, the one obvious one for me uh, is athletes, right? Because those are, those, are, um, those are excused absences from class and from testing periods. So I may need to make special assignments for those athletes and then um, uh, assign activities to them. The other one uh, that I commonly have is folks with, um, with the uh, American Disabilities Act um, uh, time extensions on, on evaluated activities. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll say, hey, I'm just going to create a group here. And I'll create this group and I'll call it uh, Extra Time. And I'm going to go ahead and save this group. And then what I can do is I can then come and pick the students that belong in that group. And I'm going to go ahead and add those over into this group, and and then we will uh, add these folks over into this group, and and then uh, I'll be able to assign special activities to just these students. All right, so go ahead and get out of there, and uh, and the the strategy for that. 
what I like to do is I like to come back if I'm gonna if I'm going to assign things to particular to student groups I like to make a, a new activity if, if it's just if it's you know if it's the midterm I'll make it and I'll call I'll, I'll make another midterm activity and call it midterm uh, athletes midterm uh, special or extra time and then assign it to that group because that way it doesn't affect the settings for the other students and that's just a and that way it creates its own grade column and I can drill down into that folder so it's just a little a little easier for me <clears throat> so the uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll look at activity reports and to do that where these are is in this reports button here and this is what this looks like and I, I, if, if, you're, if you're really interested in a lot of this stuff, I highly recommend that you hop over into the end of term, evaluate success and transition to next term video. I do a deep dive there. And in fact, what I'm going to do here is hop over into the um, end of the PowerPoint that I designed for just that, uh, just that video. And we'll look at this because um, what I've done is I've gone through and removed all of the, or used a random name generator uh, to to change all the names in here, and uh, and used a random number generator to change all the student IDs, so that we can look at these uh, reports in more detail without a bunch of yellow boxes over the top of them. So what you'll see here is that uh, as we as we go through this, we can um, we can uh, look at these different uh, different reports, and and that's exactly what we have here. And the useful ones to look at here definitely. Customer efficacy report uh, gives you a, a, a beautiful flat view of your course, so it eliminates all of the file structure that I had going on before. It gives you just your student, student IDs, and then the, the, the raw scores on all of the activities. That's a really good one. Uh, student enrollment is, is a nice one just to look at uh, time time in course, a lot like that notification window. We see the time in course and their, their, uh, their last login, uh, so that, that's really useful. And we've got uh, we've got uh, student activity results, right? So we can look at those and uh, and then come in. We can actually we can filter down and then get down into just that and see um, and <clears throat> see what they see what they did on individual assignments, right? Uh, the frequency, uh, the exam uh, frequency analysis. Again, we get the same kind of filter to come down to that, and then once we get there. Uh, we can. Uh, this is really good for identifying like bad quiz questions because we get feedback on each particular uh, quiz question. Right? And uh, finally, let's hop on down here. Another good one is the integrity violation report. Earlier, I had mentioned this when I said, "Well, so uh, you know, one integrity violation probably not something I'm going to pursue." But if I come down through like this, I can get a nice report back that shows, "Hey." This is the expected student name. I'm seeing the same student, you know, uh, like 10 entries, and then the student name found the same 10 entries. Well, it looks like this is probably a case for, um, for identifying cheating. So if these, uh, if these reports are of interest to you, I highly recommend that you go over to the uh, end of term, uh, evaluate success and transition to next term uh, video. I spend 40 minutes in there just talking about these, uh, these reports and possible uses for them. The final thing that we want to mention in this uh, in uh, in this uh, video is just the um, the uh, uh, continuing education units. If you're interested in getting a certification, saying that you know everything about this video, you can do that. You uh, you just do the assignment, you send it on over to me, and we uh, we, we grade that and uh, send you back your certification. And so that'd be a fun way to improve your skills in here. Uh, the uh, probably the only other thing to really point out. Uh, that I always uh, like to look at is the uh, the different the, the help that's available in my IT lab. Uh, the, a really good one is just if you if you hop over into this little help the button there and you just come on over into the uh, into the user guide. Um, oh no, not the user guide. Let's hop out of that. We'll just go into help here, and uh, and this is this is searchable. Really good stuff. You know, if we just come down into this. Um, and uh, we just want to go ahead and uh, search topics, and we can come right in here, you know, and just say, "Hey, I want to talk about the uh, the grade book here." Um, uh, well, you'd actually have to spell that correctly, right? <laughs> grade book, and we're going to search it. Uh, you know, it's just a, this is this is a great, uh, well indexed help site. And the other the other really good one is to come on over here and just go into uh, the My IT Lab community. It is a very rich site. Of course, you've probably already you've probably already found that, seeing as how um, I believe 
uh, this video is actually located there. And so you probably you probably found your way there already. But let's just take a look at that and say, here we are. Here was probably where this video was. And then these discussions, boy, these are really good. If you just hop into here, uh, if you have a question about something and you come over here to this community, you know, you will, uh, you will more than likely find what it is that you're looking for right there. And if you don't, uh, go ahead and, and, uh, and register and post a comment. And there are just hundreds of people that work this site. Uh, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of really nerdy folks that just love this stuff, uh, like myself. And if you post some comment, believe you're going to get a lot of responses back uh, and answer your question in a hurry. And so that pretty much wraps this one up. Uh, I'll put this back up and put here's my uh, contact information again. Uh, I love collaborating and uh, talking to folks about what they're doing with my IT lab, and uh, I'm available for one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, video conferences just anytime you like. Uh, just go ahead and just reach out to me directly, and I'd love to connect with you. Well, uh, good luck with my IT lab, and I'll see you in the next video.